Good morning. Today we're gonna talk about the basics, the simple. How do you get started if you're just learning about pro-metabolic and want to improve your metabolism, restore your metabolism, and heal your hormones in a more natural way? If you have no idea what pro-metabolic is, I have a video for you to learn what it is, how it changed my life, and how it can potentially help you as well. This is going to be a very broad overview of, as I said, pro-metabolic for beginners. There are so many nuances because every single person is different, every body is different. And that's exactly why I started doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. So if you're interested in doing one-on-one -on -one coaching with me to get into the nitty gritty of how we can actually implement these principles into your specific lifestyle, I'll put the link in the description box below so that you can schedule a free 15 minute consultation with me to see if we're a good fit and how I can really help you. But for this video, we're gonna talk about how to get started, basically a pro-metabolic for beginners. Before we even get into what to do and how to start restoring your metabolism, there first needs to be a check-in point. And a lot of times that can be, what are your symptoms? Like what's your body telling you? Listen to your body. There's a lot of different signs and symptoms that you could be experiencing that are telling you your metabolism is suffering. And metabolism is not just how you burn calories or burn fat. Your metabolism literally encompasses every process in your body. That includes your hormones, your digestion, your immune system, and so much more. So your metabolism is really what's controlling every single process in your entire body. So if your metabolism is slower, then the functions of your body are going to be slower or struggling. And those are some good signs to see how your metabolism is actually functioning. So once you have those subjective markers of how you're feeling, it's important to then look at what are some objective ways that we can measure the health of your metabolism. And there are two. The first one is taking your temperature. So just grab a thermometer from Target, Amazon, Walgreens, whatever, and then take your temperature first thing in the morning before you even get out of bed. Since your metabolism refers to your cell's ability to burn energy, this should create heat within your body. So a well-functioning metabolism should generate heat. So first thing in the morning when you wake up, your temperature should be at least 97.8 degrees Fahrenheit. If it's below that, that is an objective marker or an objective sign that your metabolism is struggling. You can also check your temperature after breakfast and then again later in the afternoon. This gives you a good starting point to see where you're at and so we know which direction to go in. But when you're chronically stressed out, your body is so used to running on adrenaline and cortisol that the temperature is already increased because those are stress hormones. So they increase the temperature in your body. So then your temperatures will look like they're pretty normal. They're pretty healthy. That's why the second objective measure of checking your pulses is also extremely important. Same idea, first thing in the morning before you even get out of bed, check your pulse. And this is how you do it. Take two fingers and put them on your wrist, your thumb side, and you're gonna feel for your pulse. It should be a strong beating pulse. Set your timer on your phone or wherever for 30 seconds, and within those 30 seconds, count how many times you feel that pulse. At the end of the 30 seconds, multiply that by two, and you'll have your beats per minute. You should have a resting pulse between 75 and 90 beats per minute. If it's outside of those ranges, especially first thing in the morning, that is a sign of a slow metabolism. Okay, so now that we have those two objective markers, go ahead and start tracking those, write them down, do the notes app in your phone, and make a log of what your temperatures are doing so you have a good starting point. Now it's time to start restoring your metabolism. So the first true step in healing and restoring your metabolism and your hormones is to actually eat to fuel your metabolism. And that encompasses three main things. Number one, eat enough. This is the number one thing I see across the board with my patients and my clients. They are not eating nearly enough. 
Most women require at least 2,000 calories a day at bare minimum, and most of my patients and clients, what I'm seeing is they're only eating about 1,500 to max 1,800 calories a day. Again, this is general, and that's exactly why I'm doing one-on-one -on -one coaching so we can figure out exactly how many calories you need specifically. But in general, most women need minimum 2,000 calories a day. That's not even including how much you work out, if you're pregnant, if you're prepping for a pregnancy, or if if you're postpartum. The second factor is eating often. And this means eating every three to four hours. The name of the game is keeping your blood sugar level. And that means eating frequently. This stabilizes your blood sugar and helps prevent those peaks and valleys throughout the day, especially that mid-afternoon crash. And this provides your body with steady energy so that it can function optimally instead of being in a state of stress. The third item is eating breakfast within 60 minutes of waking up. When you get up in the morning, your body has been fasting all night. The glycogen stores in your liver are likely running very, very low because they've been using them up all throughout the night while you slept. This means you need to refuel your body to restore those glycogen levels and stabilize your blood sugar. This will help keep you energized and level-headed throughout your day. But one thing here, coffee is not breakfast. Coffee isn't the enemy, but coffee on an empty stomach is because it's only gonna raise your cortisol levels. Try to drink your coffee with or after breakfast. Now that we have those three rules down, it's also about eating the right balance of food. And that means balancing carbs, protein, and fat. But how do you know how many carbs, how many grams of protein and how much fat to eat. That is so specific per individual. Again, that's why I'm doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. <clears throat> First, it's important to see how much and what you're eating now. And this starts with tracking what you're eating. I want you guys to download this free app. It's called My Fitness Pal. It's super user-friendly, super easy to use. What you're gonna do is just track three days and make them on the weekday because those are more realistic. And make sure it's 100% accurate, even if you're eating you know, black coffee for breakfast, a spoonful of almond butter for lunch, and binging everything in sight for dinner. Then you can see your average calorie intake as well as what your macros are now. And macros refer to macronutrients, which are carbs, protein, and fat. Once you have a good starting point, then I want you to go to this website and type in all the information they need, like your age, height, weight, activity levels, things like that. And they're going to calculate your lowest calorie requirements. These are absolute minimums. And again, if you are breastfeeding, if you're postpartum, if you're pregnant, if you're planning on getting pregnant, and if you're incredibly active, this is an absolute bare minimum for your metabolism to even function. That doesn't necessarily mean to thrive, just to function. Now, if these numbers scare you, that's normal, okay? And I do not, I do not want you to go head first, dive in, go from eating 1,100 calories a day to 2,000. That is the last thing I want you to do. You have to take it so, so slow, okay? And that means only adding 50 to 100 calories per week, okay? Do not dive head first. You will be in a load of hurt. Once you have your calories, they'll give you a rough estimate of a breakdown of your macros. Then you'll have a general idea of how many carbs to eat per day, how many grams of protein to eat per day, how much fat to eat per day. Again, this is very general, and in my opinion, at the bare minimum of helping your metabolism to even function. Now that we have that general sense, okay, what do I eat? With every, every meal, snacks included, you want to balance your carbs, protein, and fat. So fruit is a great source of carbs. Other great sources of carbs would be things like white rice, potatoes, raw honey, fruit juices like orange juice, and raw milk. Metabolically suppressive sources of carbs would be things like brown rice, believe it or not. Whole wheat, processed breads, and processed foods, processed grains. Tons of raw vegetables. Oh my goodness, I could tell you stories of how bloated I was when I was eating loads and loads of raw vegetables. These things that I'm saying are metabolically suppressive are not bad by any means. They're just more difficult for your body to digest. 
you can do things to make them easily digestible, more easy for your body to digest. Things like soaking those grains, soaking legumes, soaking beans, so that they start to break down a little bit more before you consume them. Brown rice is more heavily sprayed with pesticides because it has that outer shell than when you take off the outer shell and left with the white rice, that is more easily digested and less sprayed with chemicals. And for the raw vegetables, just cook your vegetables a little bit. It makes them so much easier to digest. A good rule of thumb that I say for what kind of carbs should I eat, keep it to fruits and roots. Now for protein, some really great metabolically supportive foods would be things like pasture-raised organic eggs, bone broth, grass-fed and finished beef, gelatin, and shellfish. Protein plays such an important role in the body for repair, for rebuilding, for growth. We need a good amount of protein, in my opinion, minimum 90 grams a day, minimum. And that can be a little difficult to hit. So a really great way to up your protein intake would be consuming bone broth as well as collagen. I put collagen in my coffee every single day and I also put it in an adrenal cocktail throughout the day. And that's 20 grams already, right there. Now don't mistake this for animal products only, never eat plant protein for the rest of your life. No, 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 no. There can be problems with animal protein as well. We eat so many muscle meats. That's basically all we eat in today's day and age are the muscle meats of the animals. Muscle meats contain really high amounts of inflammatory amino acids. And when there's an excess of these amino acids in the body, thyroid hormone is suppressed and stress hormone tends to rise then your metabolism becomes sluggish. So it's important to remember how our ancestors ate. When they were hunting and gathering, they were eating nose to tail, meaning every part of the animal. That's why we supplement with things like desiccated liver supplements, bone broth, collagen, and gelatin. Some metabolically suppressive forms of protein would be things like nuts and seeds, grains and legumes. Now, again, I'm calling these metabolically suppressive because they are harder for your body to digest. To make them easier for your body to digest, you need to soak them or do something to them in order to make them more digestible. Soaking and sprouting is a really good way to do that. Last but not least is fat, and fat is really important. Saturated fats are so good for your body, but we wanna look for those saturated fats that are easiest to digest and most bioavailable. We're looking for saturated fats because they are the most stable, meaning they do not oxidize in the presence of heat or light very easily. These are things like grass-fed and finished dairy, butter or ghee, coconut products, and fats coming from animals like beef, bison, and seafood. Metabolically suppressive fat items would be things like nuts and seeds, polyunsaturated fatty acids, like those vegetable oils, safflower oil, sunflower oil, canola and soy. And I know I'm gonna get a lot of heat for like saying nuts and seeds, we should kind of avoid. But when in human history has it been so easily accessible to eat the mass amount of nuts and seeds that we are today? Do you know how hard it is to get one almond and let alone we're eating handfuls of them every day in almond milk, almond flour, as a snack, all day, every day? When in human history has that ever been a thing? Does that sound biologically appropriate to you? Cause it does not to me, that just doesn't make any sense. When you switch out your fat sources from things like nuts and seeds to more saturated fat like butter and coconut, the cravings start to switch. I used to crave almond butter. I loved almond butter so much. I would eat it by the spoonful. But after I switched to getting away from nuts and seeds and more towards saturated fat like animal fat, like yogurt and coconut and butter and raw milk, my cravings were satisfied and I don't even crave almond butter anymore because my biological need for fat is met, it's satisfied. And my fat intake naturally dropped about 50% because my body had what it needed. There is so much more we can get into, but I wanted to keep this very simple and very basic. I have so many other videos that you can check out that include things like grocery hauls, 
lunch ideas, dinner ideas, breakfast ideas, even dessert ideas so that you can get a better grasp of what foods to eat and how to shop for those foods. But first I wanted to lay the groundwork of this is what the goal is. This is what we're actually doing, the nitty gritty, the logistics of everything. So I hope it made sense. I hope you learned something or got something from it. Hit the like button if you did. Comment if you have any questions or what you wanna see in the next few videos explaining like Pro Metabolic 101 for beginners. And don't forget to subscribe. I post a video every week. Thanks, see you next time, bye.